All right, everybody, it's the Repo Show. Shout out to my fans, all my millions of fans, <laughs> and the 50 of them watching on YouTube. Today's yeah, special guest, my old friend Zach Gore. Finally found some time to get him on here. So how you been, buddy? You know, buddy, on the grind, man, just working like a dog. Finally got some kind time of. off, eh? Finally, buddy. How's your it's little puppy doing? Oh man, where's I gotta get him out at some point when he comes outside? I'll show you. But he's like a he's he's gonna be big, man. He's like a hundred pounder. He's starting to get a little pit bull look to him, but hey, he's got that brindle pad in me. Yeah, I like that junkyard dog look, the brindle. He's good though. He's good. Like for a pit bull, I thought he was gonna be like scared, but uh, no, he's gonna be good. But I could definitely see if like if I let pressing keep being the way he wants to be with him, he will be he a fucking Vicious. menace. <laughs> He'll be yeah, gonna like put it, down. Well, I don't want one of those dogs where, like, if he gets loose and it's like you know, you're locked down for everybody. Like, you can't go. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Uh, like, if my dog gets loose too, it gets pretty tense. Like, we're trying to get him back as quick as we can because we don't know how he acts if he gets free. Yeah, like, like a little kid could be on the ground and you're just following the little kids on the ground to follow where he's been. Dude, I saw a thing on the news a while ago where this this woman let her pit bull alone with her like three month year old baby. And this pit bull ended up humping the baby, like actually penetrated the baby and then ran away. Like, you know how they get stuck together? Oh, yeah, yeah. The dog ran out of the house onto the street with the baby still attached to it. And then uh, I think they ended up they ended up killing the dog or whatever. But fucking wild. But I don't know why the lady let the baby alone with the pit bull. That's an old fashioned stuck job, buddy. <laughs> you got to spray it with the hose. <laughs> hey, speaking of animals, I fucking... <laughs> this shit popped up on my news feed. I don't even know why we even got there because I don't look at this shit. But I don't know if you ever look at Google and that news feed. Like you're on your phone, you swipe. It pops up. Yeah. You swipe. Well, if you just swipe right, like this shit pops up. And I guess it's, I don't know where this came or, okay, cause I don't watch nothing about this, but some shit about some lady that's been getting too intimate with a, a chimpanzee and they're asking her to stop. <laughs> they're asking, like some stuff's going on between her and the cage. And yeah. all the other, all the other chimps are shunning her because she's spending this one spending too much time diddling with the lady. Yeah, that's a that's a real thing. And then the lady ends up getting killed and torn apart one day by them all. Probably. There's a dolphin documentary too, where a woman. I think there's two separate ones, a guy and a woman. They had spent so much time with this dolphin, trying to teach it and stuff, where she would just let the dolphin masturbate on her, like she just let the oh. dolphin jump up and hump her, and uh, she just go with it. Yeah, she, if she didn't get the doll, if she didn't get it off, it would get really aggressive and depressed. And I when think, they actually finally they cut off visitation with the lady, the dolphin killed itself. It fucking drowned itself. I thought they were such a majestic creature until you just told me that. Oh, well, they're they're just fucking the head just like we are. Yeah. Well, I've been hearing dolphin a lot in the, in the rap game, and it's because guys are saying you're gonna turn you into dolphin. It means your head's gonna have a hole in it. <laughs> that's the new reference they're using. <laughs> that's the, yeah, to you the dolphin head boy and all this shit. Oh yeah. Have you seen all the Kanye stuff? His the shit that he's doing oh, in the stadium. Man, he brought out Marilyn Manson. Like holy, he's bringing out all the all the wife beaters and all the, the fucking it's weird, worst eh? of the worst. Like if you if you kick the shit out of a woman or rape, he's bringing yo. Like I bet you he tries to get Harvey Weinstein bail and bring him out too with <laughs> Manson. Bring out fucking who do you? I'm convinced. Uh, okay. I'm convinced uh, Kanye is just a scam artist now. Like the type of clothes that he puts out, and people are actually spending the money on it and shit. It doesn't make any sense, and people are just going with it. People still buying his albums. I don't get it at all. This shit's not terrible, man. Even yeah, Kim no, Kardashian had to leave that. Like that guy's got a billion dollars, and she still left him. Yeah. If that yeah, won't keep a... you around. What? Well, like, what does that? If even a billion <laughs> won't, like that. At that. You have to be really fucked. Yeah, he's nuts. 
you look uh you look just like the terrorist that I used to work with in Mississauga. Love you too. I need you to go to Jimmy Choo to pick up a pizza. Can you give me a call? I'm dead serious. It's over by that end. Jimmy Choo's pizza. And you pick up a pizza. Give me a call when you're out there. Yes, <laughs> down, at, down at the north end. Mom, please. Name is Gore. Mom. <laughs> he keeps it now, yeah. Awesome. I miss your pancakes. I miss the pancakes you used to make. Oh my God, you remember that? That's the, that's the main thing I remember. Yeah. Did you see her oh, waving my wheat? Did you see her waving <laughs> my wheat? Oh, it's the, the wheat. Mrs. Mrs. Gore, do you remember the day that you were having the garage sale and me and Zach came rushing to the house and the lady uh, searched our backpacks, accusing us of throwing water balloons at her car? <laughs> her memory's terrible now. Oh, yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, but you saved our asses there. <laughs> yeah, you were, I remember you two got into trouble. I Especially remember us coming home these, coming home drunk one time, and Zach was throwing up, and then you came in to check on him, and I was fine. And as you left the room, Zach said, hey, Mom, Adam was drinking too, and just <laughs> you remember that? Out for nothing. <laughs> Man, she, my mom can't even remember Preston's okay. name. See you later. <laughs> You two, uh, you two should watch the Blockbuster documentary that just came out. I remember we would every weekend we would go to Blockbuster and uh, get movies and pizza. Oh man, we oh, waste. Okay, well, we waste a lot of money there, man. <laughs> my mom said the both of us were dangerous. She yeah, said we, we were been. up. She knows we were up to no good, man. Yeah, there's nothing better to we do. Always. And he was so sweet. And he <laughs> said, she said we always smelled like we've been sprayed by a pack of skunks and we came home. <laughs> oh, she's talking about, remember when you guys used to beat on the skunks? Beat up, yeah, skunk hunting, yeah, in the co-op. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big sport, right? Yeah, good times. I remember there was this, uh, the packy kid, Froggy. Uh, do you remember the kid, Froggy? Did you ever meet him? Yeah, yeah. He was only around for a bit, but uh, he was fresh to the country and we said to him, the skunk isn't, and unless the skunk gets up on his front feet and like puts his ass in your face, then he's not spraying. So he would go right up to the skunk, like face to face with the thing, because he figured as long as it wasn't turning around and sticking its ass up, it wasn't spraying and get the shit sprayed out of him. It's terrible, man. That shit close up. It's a totally different smell. Yeah. <laughs> Have you we ever been rain. sprayed before? It's, it's Oh, no, I never been sprayed, but my dad was sprayed one time. Yeah, a good spray. Yeah, I got it, yeah. He read at our, house. House, he, at our old house. At our old house, he went outside to take the garbage. As soon as he opened up the side door, there was one like right on like, the railing and hit Oof. him as soon as he opened the door. Up. He must have been pissed. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. So let's let's take it back to like 1998 when we first met at uh, Aurora Senior here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yes, look at that. Yeah, what, what happened to my hair, man? Like what the fuck, buddy? Is that even the same person? I remember it being blonde for some reason. I remember you, or maybe did you just dye it blonde underneath? Was, yeah, that was the style, man. Gold tips. I did it before it was even big, man. Like, that had gold tips in 98, man. Or like, earlier than that, like 96, probably. So I've talked, about, uh, Mr. I've talked about Mr. Horseman before, touching the girls and shit. And uh, that was he a was real thing, hands right? On. He was a hands-on <laughs> teacher. Though. Absolutely. So do you remember us telling the teachers and they never did, they just didn't do anything about it? Because I specifically remember bringing it up, but then nothing ever happening about it. They it was a don't touch at you. They do not yeah, touch I guess, that. Yeah, they would. I guess so. Just uh, touch the kids, but don't touch the issue. No, she would. Yeah, they would just say, "Oh, they were just that's just physiotherapy." Yeah, like that Olympic doctor, right? Did you ever see the documentary yeah. on that guy? No, but I know Horseman definitely had some smells in his fingers that he shouldn't have had as a gym teacher. <laughs> I remember the when it, it was it was completely out in the open. He there was no denying it. Once they started doing that pommel horse thing, where like the girl would jump off the bouncy thing oh, up onto the what? piece, so then he would like yeah, grab they, their chest and their ass, lift them up onto the thing, and it was just a dead giveaway when, after that. 
At one point, I saw him literally with his face on the thing, just trying to say he's trying to line them up. Like you're trying to like you had the thing like this, like line. He's trying to line them up like this. Had the thing right on the horn. But Snow I remember like a, I remember a specific incident. We won't mention name, but a girl went to jump up for a jump shot, and he's like, "Here, let me show you." And as she jumped up, he just grabbed her by the tits. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't know if you were there. I thought you were say by the waist, and then I was going to say that's I believe no, 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 it for sure. It her initials are H and M. No way! I was going to bring her yes. up too because she was one of the only ones yes. with tits in there. Yes. Okay. So you remember that? She yeah. Fucking... Yeah, I was obsessed with her. That was like my first school love for sure. Who wasn't? And I remember McDonald. Yeah, there was uh, one point where she was actually into me. After like two years of having a fucking crush on her, but she never told me. And uh, I was, I guess, really good friends with Megan Kitchen, and she was like hinting to it, but she wouldn't tell me either. And then by the time she actually told me, she probably got into her mom's script. She knew about her phone. I actually went. I actually went to her door in like grade seven or eight. I think I I found her address and went to her door and like and called on her. I think I did the same thing to Cindy Mazenov too back then she's got hips and ass now like crazy did you hear about her little brother died too huh did you hear about you remember cindy mason right the hot blonde yeah her brother and father died man oh the, what happened with the dad i didn't hear about that he died first and that's what really fucked up joey and kind of made things spiral but yeah I got a bunch of uh, the old eight millimeter skate videos and uh, like once Jackson passed away, I was talking to his mom on Facebook and it was weird watching these videos of Joey and Rob, both skating, both dead. And uh, yeah, watching these videos of these kids. And I even, I reached out to Cindy actually too on Facebook and I was like, I have some videos of your brother, like of better times and whatever. She uh, want no part of it? No, nothing. I don't think they're ever, <laughs> no, I don't think even, even in them days, them boys were fucked up, man. But it's still not as bad, but still it's, skateboarding blocked a lot of the shit that's for sure yeah yeah probably the only a thing you can do sober yeah the um i remember i wouldn't i went and sold cindy a bunch of coke one time when she was with walker and uh she completely like played oblivious denying like almost that she had no idea who i was or anything and i, would, I think i just straight up said in like grade eight i was like obsessed i had a huge crush on you and and yeah nothing yeah, just took her drugs. I'm outside, right, I'm outside right now, and I'm going to make a break for it inside, but look what I got to go through here. Okay. Like, look, I think my buddy's going to try and come outside in this. Are you coming out in this? Are you fucked? <laughs> Holy fuck, buddy. You get, he wants his drink. It's here on the table. I'm not, you know what? He's got to come in the rain to get that thing. <laughs> you want to come get it? Watch this. Why? You're going to soak her here. Come for it. Let me see it. Oh, oh. I already ran out. I, was, I got caught in the fucking. Yeah, I'm going in the garage. It's too much out there, man. Here, watch out. I gotta get by. I'm gonna play a little uh, PSA oh, while you're running place. around there. Hey, thought about taking drugs? I don't know. I never really thought about it. Think hard. The first hit's free, but you find me when you need more. The choice. It's yours. What do you think? No, it's just not worth the time. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. <clears throat> First hit's always free. Hold on, I'm going to the new spot. Oh, wow. oh, oh, oh my god. Whoa, this is <laughs> 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 Now after that, are you all set there? Holy fuck! Is this where you guys plot out jihad? Since the jihad that I've been plotting, <laughs> go those bags, go those bags, man. I was like, looking look at the calendars. Look, look at all the grocery money right there, man. I can't see. I can't see it. Oh no! Look. Oh fuck! Look all I these. Flock. I usually flaunt Canadian tire money on here. I flaunt bags like old bags of dope. You know, at least though, <laughs> every one of those at least seventy to one hundred and twenty bucks. Maybe a couple of fucking ounce bags in here, bud. 
Was that fucking government weed or what? No, no, I don't. That's stuff I buy, but I do have my benefits does cover between me and the coal. My benefits covers four thousand bucks a year. No way. Yeah, buddy. That's Local one eighty three. The laborers union covers weed for all their members. That's dope. It is. So yeah. Uh, you all said or what? Oh, yeah, let's do it, buddy. Sorry, somebody's calling. All right, me. right. So there's a couple, uh, some skate videos. These are some of the videos that I got from uh, Jackson's mom here. Oh, <laughs> that was happy on that, man. What was I going for? <laughs> I going for a crooked drawing? Yeah, 180 out. Here's a good one. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> Ooh, who's your nice. daddy, bud? Smooth, smooth. Middle style, eh? Nice, nice. Here's uh, here's one. You, here's a trick you'll be real proud of right here. One for his future wife, Aline Corp. <laughs> Fuck shit. Man, you're gonna you get me a defamation suit. You're gonna get defamation suit if this goes to thick. <laughs> so the Blue Tower Lounge, were you there uh, the night of the fire when I lit the big fire? Oh, was that the one? I don't know. No, I don't know if it was. I don't think I was there for that. I know you got in a lot of trouble though. Were they pissed? Yeah. The fire department came, right? Yeah, yeah. Every everything, they had the police, everybody came. But yeah, so it was a big what gas happened? generator. They, they were like these um, model tree houses. I don't really know. I know exactly what they were, but they had them out in the field, like because it's the industrial area. So then yeah. me and like Davis and Buddy and a couple guys went out there. And we're all fire bugs. So I pulled the cap off the thing and smelt that it was flammable. So I lit it up and we're kicking the cap around, kicking the fireball around. And then I got the yeah. bright idea to just light the whole thing on fire, like the generator from the lid. And I uh, didn't know what it was. And I was so lucky the thing didn't just explode and fucking melt me. Uh, but huge fire blazing out of the thing. And then everybody ran. They all just ran and left me there by myself. Well, and I'm course. trying to piss. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to piss all over this gasoline fire and it's not doing anything. Still standing right beside it. It could fucking explode at any minute. And then uh, Rob, the fucking, the owner comes running out with the fire extinguisher and save the day. And and then he's like, you know, the cops are going to come. And if you don't fess up to this, then you're never coming back here. So as soon as they came, oh, you, I was like, I did it. And fucking that was it. Gave it oh, he gave it to you, eh? Yeah, yeah. What did Gord so that say? Was the, did you get to go on the Quebec trip in grade eight? Oh, fuck yeah. That was fuck. How was that? Was, that? Was, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that was fucked. I remember, I I can't remember who's. I think I say we're like Nigel, Anthony, and Will, and we were, fuck, man. I think we were like nobody got any sleep the whole fucking time. We were just fucking each other all night, like throwing like fucking shaving cream bombs and it's like just shit that burns your skin all night and stuff, man. It's just Tummy I just sticks. remember it was terrible. I remember having no sleep there. And not like, it was fucking. But it's pretty wild though. They don't do that shit anymore. It's like grade eight, just go to a fucking other province and just. Have free reign of a fucking mountain? <laughs> Probably not. I uh, so I've talked to about my years um, in the uh, methadone clinics and talking to junkies. Uh, <laughs> I found a huge thing in common that all of these people were weren't able to go on the Quebec trip for one reason or another. Like they either got in trouble or their parents couldn't but, afford it or whatever. Cool. You think that's where it all started with all these fucking York region guys? Yeah. So my my. Parents had to pay for that generator, and that was the reason I couldn't. That was their excuse that I couldn't go on the trip. They probably couldn't have afforded the trip anyways, but they had to pay for the generator. But that was a good fucking excuse, though, eh? Yeah, like, it worked out good for them. Mm -hmm. well, we got them. Speaking of Porteous, um, so I got a bunch of people that like viewers on TikTok, and this guy, I was telling stories about you, and then this guy messaged me, and he's like, Do you know Will? Like Zach and Will, and all these people, and I like started naming Will's uh, siblings. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, used to, I sold weed to his mom, and I grew up with him in grade school and shit. Oh, like, and then he's like, you must know Uncle. His mom? Yeah, yeah. It was like when I was really? dating Nikki. Yeah, I think his his parents had actually. I ran into him the day his parents split up, and he I was remember like, that. Fucking... you told me it was fucking rough as fuck. Yeah, he was a mess. And then, yeah. um, so it wasn't long after that. It was a point where I was dating Nikki, and Nikki was working with Will's mom. And she's like, oh, I need to buy some weed for somebody at work. And I had to, like, force it out of her who the person was because she didn't want to 
anybody to find out and this and that. And then, uh, yeah, it was Will's mom. So weird selling it to her for the first time. Oh, wow. And so I guess it was because her new boyfriend then, like w- Uncle Bill or something, the guy called him. I don't know if that's <laughs> actually his name. Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, so I told a bunch of it was it was pretty crazy that uh, just totally random on TikTok. I th- it must have been his cousin or something like that. No way. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's hilarious. Do you start you in touch with him much? Oh fuck yeah, he's uh, he just hates life right now. Does he? <laughs> he, was, he was he had this job where he like traveled the world and saw like like the, like probably like the, the one of the craziest shit? like. Yeah, like like virtual reality golf shit, like simulator things. So like celebrities and shit all got it and everything. Like it was, it was the one that everybody got. Yeah, and I guess like with this COVID and shit, everything just went to fucking hell. Yeah, I seen him at a Mike Rollings had a birthday party at one of these lacrosse games, uh, the Rock or whatever the Barry team, and uh, Portis was there. So we kind of caught up with Portis a bit and then uh, I add him to Facebook and he's seeing all the shit that I'm posting or whatever. And he blocked me like instantly. And then I haven't talked to him since. It was a little too heavy for his liking, was it? Oh yeah. Way too heavy. He's an anarchist I'm... now. <laughs> like he was on the guys, he was on the guys downtown, like protesting like the fucking lockdowns and shit. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you know anybody else doing that? No, I know, I know, no. I don't know. Marky's down there. Like Marky Mark, eh? No way. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta have a lot of time for that shit, you know what I mean? Like, you can't have a fucking job. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, how do these people don't have jobs if they're down there doing that shit all day? You gotta be on CERB for that, man. (laughs) Yeah, you gotta be collecting for sure. Yeah, those are CERB protests. Um, what else? I said we were having some more blue towel stories. I remember um, when I fell on my rib that day trying to do just a simple backside board slide, and beat the fuck great. out of my ribs, and then he tried to, uh, he like bullied me into staying for the rest of the day. Yeah, I remember that. And he fucked up and did the same thing together. Your, I'm just saying, no, you fucked up your eye. That was another time, yeah. And then we stayed well, at your place the night after. I get, I think it was, I had a brand new board, and I was trying to do tail slides or something and face first on my eye like right under my eyebrow and then he convinced me to stay with my like swollen eye and then somehow managed to land on coming down on a 50 50 on a quarter pipe and going face first right back down into the same spot on my eye and i couldn't even open it the next day and shit yeah, i remember though much. when you hit the ribs though like the way you did it and that like, you hit the side and then like you had no support from arms or feet and when you hit on oh. the side of your rib it made you explode air in like this <laughs> fucked up noise. Are they like, the like, sound ah! came out. like ah! <laughs> 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 what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and even after you thought like, okay, that's that would be it. Like you were going still. It was like most of you would be like, ah! you were like, you <laughs> <laughs> just kept going, man. Dude, you sound yeah. like the stereotype that you're making right now. Or you look like the oh. sound you're making. The um, <laughs> Oh, the fucking oh, Akbar? It? So, yeah. Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> so the last skate session with, that we had out in Barrie, um, I thought I learned my lesson that first time with the backside board slide. That had that scared me for 10 years of doing backside board slides. Oh, sorry, Adam. Yes, mother. I'm in a podcast, mother. Who? <laughs> One, two, kick out of school. Three, four, six, seven, four, five, six. Need my fix. Eight. Feels too late. Drugs. Do you know where they'll take you? To learn the effects of drugs and how you two can say no, visit drugsnotforme.ca. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I like what she did with her hair. I didn't like what she did with her hair. <laughs> this one I found weird. Like the, uh, Green. the chicks, I was going to say the chicks, the little Green. girls are like way too sexy in this. They're like sexing them up. Love Watch drugs. Juicy. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, juicy. Is <laughs> for your booklet on how to talk with your oh, friends on drugs. Visit drugprevention.gc.ca or call us. 
<laughs> They're making drugs look sexy there. I love how the kids got both fucking marijuana <laughs> and cocaine. Yeah, he's the black kid. The black, the black kid was just straight cocaine, eh? Yeah. Who have you ever heard of Juicy? Like Juicy J? No. <laughs> <laughs> Putting what do they say? Coke and marijuana is juicy. Oh, that that's what I call a regular day. Oh, jeez. I remember every no, time that I tried to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. That's a waste. That, it's honestly, a huge the only waste. time I've ever had a good time was when I put that stuff into a vape. Like, not cooking <laughs> But the one, no, the time, time, I had, I'm gonna be honest, the one time, I'm gonna be honest, the one time I was desperate, I was on one of them fucking guys' trips. One of them guys' weekends that I do, I tell you, with all the guys, we go to the bush and just, it's all, it's fucked. Just take booze and whatever else people bring along. And so the one day, powder? <laughs> Well, I mean, mushroom, it's whatever. It's a fucking treasure trove. It's fear and loathing and fucking Perry Sound, basically, instead of Las Vegas. <laughs> you guys should be filming it for sure. There's been, there was one year where I have footage, but I, that fucking, I think the, do you remember that? Yeah, it was fucked. It looked like Blair Witch, but, but for drugs. I wish you still had that footage of uh, the night in London when you came up there. Oh, man. That's still to this day. It's one of the, that, like that. That was a turning point. I was like, I can't, like I can get in and out of this, but I can't do this permit. Like it can like I have to like you know I I'd let me know that I can hold down a job and just maybe like periodically if I'm like on the weekends I can be a a writer. Yeah, I don't know how you I can't I couldn't do the weekend warrior, but I remember I, I you came up there oh. just for you were coming up to hang out for the night and give uh, me and the girl a ride back home to Aurora the next day. And I remember like you're like I got to study, I got school shit to do. We're not partying. Yeah. Yeah, for and then sure. We, we ended up at the Fanshawe Pub, and uh, we ended up all that. kinds of fucking places, buddy. We were, I don't even. The first time you were passed out and shit, and I was, I was all. That was a blur. <laughs> I, I followed the bag. <laughs> yeah. And there so was probably. I, was, I, I imagine some of these guys that I was hanging out with that you left me with that night are probably fucking dead now or in jail, hundred percent. Probably. Um, but I was positive that I had been drugged that night because I didn't think we didn't. I think we were only drinking beer. We didn't drink a lot. Oh, man, you, we got heavy deep in. Did you? I don't know. Were you snorting lines or no? I was once we got back to my house because I was trying to keep it. The whole, I'd been like doing blow since I was dating Colleen, like every day, every night. But keeping I, the you secret. look like you. I knew. I know. I knew. You, I never thought you'd like. I always had suspicions that you did it, but I just thought you. <laughs> I think a couple scale. people had suspicions, but I would just never uh, admit to it. I just thought you were just too cheap. You knew if you pulled one out, you'd be like, hey, be like, hey man, let me bust me off a little fucking rockini. Yeah, I always just did it by myself. I'd go home at the end of the night by myself and then do a bunch of blowing and just try to jerk off all night and never finish. That's the worst. Yeah, you're fucked, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you went wrong, man. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you do it by yourself for so long. You just resort to that. Man, you well, fuck, buddy. I hope you switched up arms. You have one arm fucking huge. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. terrible, man. Because you well, can't even bust. Rick. You could have the supermodel, and you're not gonna. Nothing's gonna come. Oh, I'd be like up till the, the sun would be coming up, and I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? Oh, like, fuck. just sniffed a hundred dollars. Nose is all fucked up. Sniffed a hundred dollars. Didn't even come. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and back then it was before Pornhub. So it was like just those click previews, like you'd be, oh, or it was yeah. DVDs. So you'd have to be skipping back the scene on the DVD. It was fucking brutal. That was the days where you had to pay for like fucking, you know, like your parents could see like shit, man. Like, and pay <laughs> five bucks for you to get that rub off. The days where you bought the, the eight dollar mega porn magazine for the free DVD. Yeah, the ones that come with the DVDs. I remember going to the like the corner store at like two a.m. just coped right out, fucking grabbing the thing. And then if you get lucky, one of your favorite chicks are on there. <laughs> Sorry, the crack too. What's yeah, um smoke, smoking crack and jerking off is a big thing too. I could see that. It gets really antisocial once you do it enough. I, know, I guess every, I guess it's fine as long as you don't catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror. No matter what you're on, as soon as you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror during that, it's all over. It doesn't matter how. <laughs> That's something that will break anything. A mirror. <laughs> I was uh, I was probably like three hours into jerking off one time. 
and I was right about to finish. I was I was right about to finish, and then the computer chair like exploded underneath me, broke into like ten different pieces. I fell back on my ass, and then never finished. So I was at work, and everyone was asking me. Right, this one guy had been sending this shit around in the group messaging this some shit about some guy fucking some fucking monkey prostitute or some yeah, fucked up thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I know everyone's like, hey man, we all see him fucking open the up yet. Like, what's going on? I was like, man, I'm not watching. That. <laughs> like, why not? I was like, man, what if, what if, um, I was like, man, what if I just catch like a fucking heart attack or something? And that's the last, like, well, that I got that up. And that's the last shit, like, the wife or the family sees or anybody, like, that's your, like, like, you catch a heart attack and you got a monkey fucking sucking somebody off. Like, and that's what, like, you know what I mean? You don't even want to take that chance. <laughs> Like you, like that's. Yeah, I guess that's not one you'd want to go out on. That's for sure. Or if they find that in the search history, mm-hmm. like once you start bringing animals in the stuff, it's you know, not just leaving. They're calling, they're calling the police. Legal. I think it's legal in like in a lot of Canada and a lot of America. I think in Colombia it's like popular. Like it's their your your passage into manhood to fuck a donkey. They think that well, they got it stri- right. They got it. Yeah, they got it right there. <laughs> well, they're in Colombia. They got such beautiful women there. Like they're number one in the world for inbreeding. But I can give them a pass on that because how hot their women are. But I don't know why they're fucking the donkeys when they got that beautiful of women. What? They say it stretches their dick and makes it bigger. Well, I do it too then. <laughs> why not? Well, I've seen the Vice has a fucking documentary on that. Nasty that's what shit. it was all. Yeah, that's where I got all my info from. Was that one? The guy, the guy finally is like, "There's not enough fucking rum in fucking Colombia to watch this shit." And <laughs> he calls it, and that's it. They're done with it. Like he just took a little glimpse, and it's like, "All right, let's get wrap this up. We're done." <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's heavy duty, man. That's fucked. Does your buddy know about? Uh, the story when you force fed your little cousin mushrooms? He's got one even worse than that. With no me way. and him. Oh man. No. So it's gonna, I don't know, probably I've probably gotta be coming up on a year now. During so with the pandemic it hit. I was still working, but he was off. <clears throat> but I was during training, so I had like a lapse in the pandemic, which was on. So they have before while they get things figured out, we both had some time off. So uh, my buddy had some wild mushrooms he got off the internet. And I was like, fuck us. <laughs> so I decided, like, we'd done them a bunch of times and he hadn't really, like, felt nothing much from them. So I was like, listen, let's do it. I found this recipe on the internet. So I do this tea. So I, I followed the directions. Anyways, I put seven grams in this fucking Holy these, shit. Of these ones in. For yourself or the split? For me, yeah, I split. It, was, it worked out to a cup each, like a, okay. a coffee cup each. And the tea was nice. Like you couldn't taste nothing in it. I mm. brewed this thing for like three hours. And I also put like a lemon in it too, which I say makes it even like it extracts more like psilocybin or whatever. So then whatever I did, I, I, I did the right thing because man, I, he had been drinking too. He was at like six, seven beers deep. Like we were supposed mm. to do that night. And then like I came downstairs and he was heavy into some video game with some other buddies. And he was deep in some beer. I was like, buddy, I was like, I thought we were fucking going on a ride tonight. He's like, oh, I'm good still. I'm good still. <laughs> so he, so I'm sipping the tea, just relaxing, we're playing some games. He just downed. I'm like, holy fuck, all right. So then he goes and takes a shower. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, just as he gets up the shower, I finish mine. He finishes like now, like 20 minutes beforehand. He comes out of the bathroom, just like fucking beat red and just like, he can't even talk. He's all weird. I'm like, man. And I'm like, get out of here. I was like, man, I don't feel a fucking thing. And he's just like, he can't even put a sentence together. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Now I'm trying to turn like the fucking video game, like off the T, like off that setting onto like another input. And I, that's one thing when I'm doing mushrooms, like as soon as I'm having trouble with the, the, the remote, I know, uh oh, like, <laughs> so I'm having trouble fucking controlling the TV now. And I know, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And I look at him, he can't even put, so I'm, so next thing you know, he goes, he says his stomach's bugging him. And that was one of the reasons why we did the tea, because it's supposed to be easier in the stomach. He was always complaining every time we did mushrooms. He would have the shits all night because he eating them. So I was like, yeah, we'll do a tea. It's mild. Anyways, he goes and sits in the toilet. And he's just sitting there for like 
tw- like 30 minutes goes by and he's still there on the toilet with the door open. I don't hear no action. I was like, so finally I'm, I'm watching like, <laughs> and I don't know why, but I put like the Royal Rumble, like from 90, 93 or something like that on. Yeah. I don't know why. So I'm watch that. And I'm like, what? So I go, I was like, man, what the fuck are you doing here, man? What's going on? And he just like, I can tell he's, he's fucked and I can feel <laughs> getting worse and worse. And he can't even talk anymore. And when yeah. I went in the bathroom, I was like, Matt, what are you doing in there? Like, I'm, the, I'm not going to hang with you anymore. And he's like, Look. <laughs> and he's like, where am I? Where am I? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm I'm getting scared. Like, holy fuck. Like, this is like, we're in trouble here. Because like the, the rookie, everything, yeah. the lights are on, but everything looks like it's they're not on. Like, that's how I'm like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> and so. I'm like, man, I, I just make the call. I'm like, man, get off the toilet. I was like, listen, we got to fucking separate here. I got to deal with this on my own, and you're going to have to go on your own with this. Like, <laughs> we, can't, we can't be together anymore. This is too heavy. We, he was devastated, we've overdone probably. it. I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I'm conceding that we've overdone it here. I need to go my separate route. You, you do your thing. Yeah. So I'm like, listen, I'll help you. Let's go. Let's go upstairs. I get him off the toilet. He gets his shit together. He kind of like, he's just kind of, he, he can't talk or nothing. Even look me in the eye. He's just, he's, he looks different, man. He's all yeah. fucked up. <laughs> and I'm getting worse and worse by the minute. <laughs> I'm going downhill. I don't got much time either. So he takes a couple <laughs> steps. He's in front of me. He takes a couple steps because we're downstairs. He gives a couple steps to go upstairs. And he just does a 180 and just sits and just perches on the steps. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> says, where am I? And he's like, where am I? He's like, he doesn't know where I am. He, he doesn't know. And I'm like, come on, man, let's go. And he's like, I can't, I can't move my legs. And he just, I'm like, okay. And I said, you know what, Matt? I was like, you better get your shit together. I'm calling 911. And he told me like months later, like, I guess by me saying the 911, that, that <laughs> sent him on a bad, bad path. So he's like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> And fine, he just ran to the couch and said, man, I went into the room with the coal and like I just was just like on the floor, like in the fetal position, just rocking back and forth for the longest time. And like I was, I started humming a bit too loud or whatever. And by two o'clock in the morning, she woke up going to the bath, like going into the bathroom. <laughs> and she's like, what's, I, like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, and I told her, like, I, like, I, we overdid it. Like, yeah. we overdid it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in deep trouble, and I was scared. I'm like, I don't even want to know what I was going through. I'm like, I don't even want to know what I was like. He had like seven beer, tall boys. In before I, was, I told her, I was like, I had, and when she woke up, I had on the TV like native flute music, and I was naked, like I was on the floor. Like, <laughs> oh, like, man, just I had, to, but I, so I was at one with it. I was all right at this point. I was good. It was his, way more than I ever wanted to be in my life. I will never, yeah, but I just, I embraced it. And it was okay. I was going to different realms. It was fine. I had it, but it was something like you can't be with anybody else. Like you have, like this is too fucked up for anybody to see. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't need her seeing. Like even Preston woke up too, and I'm really tired. Of you. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Anyways, so I calmed down. I'm I'm good. The family's there supporting me. They're all going to bed. I got my my music on. I'm just you know just watching this trippy shit on the TV and everything on the mm-hmm. floor, just doing my thing. All of a sudden, I hear like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Like, noises that were sinister. And it's Matt. <laughs> he's in the panic. He's in the, he's, he's gone off the deep end. And man, for the next three hours, all we heard was him running up. And the cold, it was to the point where the cold just went and locked our door. She's like, let's just let him deal with it. She's like, I'm not going out there. And she locked their bedroom door. Jeez. And we just heard him. I, and there was points I'm looking at the blinds and I'm all messed up. And I see Matt running outside all around the street and shit at like three in the morning. And I'm just looking at the blinds like, oh, my God. And I'm like, they're, they're not speaking <laughs> my heart. Like, he's getting me all anxious. Like, either he's going to die or like the police are going to show up. But, oh, man, he still says yeah. to this, like, he still says he hasn't been right since then. Yeah, they last too long. We went, and like we went on, we went on a trip where like we it was all about mushrooms, and he was the only guy out of like ten guys that said no. Like yeah. he's still scarred from that. He wants that. Like he, but buddy, it was all oh, man. Good for a while, like, it was something. Yeah. Something like the noises that I heard coming from him. <laughs> and finally, I had like by like four in the morning, I had enough. And I opened the door. I was like, "Man, you gotta stop." I was like, "You gotta fucking stop." <laughs> 
I was like, I can't take it. I was like, you're giving me anxiety every time you fucking scream and run up and down the stairs and in the street and shit, man. I can't take it. You gotta stop. Mm. I was so <laughs> when we did the shoot. Yeah, yeah so get oh, also, and this is all the thing. So he and then he got so fucked up in the middle. I guess he caught like a little fucking lapse where he finally could put like his thoughts together. And he grabbed his phone and was trying to text me, saying, "You fucking asshole! Like, what have you done to me? He, like, he, and all this fucked up, sinister shit." But he texted to some guy. He texted to some guy he works with. It wasn't to me. He sent this to the wrong person. Like four in the oh, yeah. fucking. Yeah, and all the guys at work were like, "Buddy, like they're all like showing each other. Like, do you see this message, right? Like, it was all this <laughs> shit, man." Like, yeah, then we can have to call call the HR the next morning. Oh, buddy. It was so, so heavy. You at your mom's house, and your cousin was there visiting from Antigua. I guess so. We were, I remember we were 17 because then I found out his age after. But so I think we, we all ate like a half quarter each, and it was, a, we were all having a good time. And then your little cousin started tripping out, and I don't know where or what like your thought process was to hold a knife to him and force him to eat more mushrooms. Um, but you did, and he ate more mushrooms. <laughs> and then at some point, he starts tripping out really bad, and then he was, Ended up in the in the basement in the washroom throwing up in the toilet and he's like Zach I can't close my eyes if, if I blink I'm gonna I'll never wake up again and shit and I remember him lifting his head up out of the toilet and he was in like in a whole nother fucking world and then we managed to get him into your bed and he's fucking like like the exorcist getting up and projectile vomiting everywhere and uh, I, was I thought he was gonna die but I was I was in that thing of where I was just kind of going with the flow because there's nothing else you can do. I was so high, I was fighting my own demons, man. And then, and then finding out he was only fourteen, that there's no reason he should have ever had any mushrooms <laughs> at all. <laughs> it, man, it was you shouldn't have brought this stuff in the first place. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you should have never brought that around. <laughs> Didn't he? Uh... That's, what I, that's what I tell him at least. I say you know, it was. A, it's a shame that that you know that happened, but I was like, you know, Adam should have never brought that stuff. <laughs> you know, we were just gonna have some pizza and then all of a sudden he brings up this fucking bag of magic I think what saved him was your uh, where did your cousin come from Toronto uh, he's like a $200 cab to come and save him right? yeah, man, it was a long ride and yeah it was good you remember though too he... he um yeah buddy I don't know what but I guess the comfort of knowing he was safe at that point but yeah he do you remember at one at one point he grabbed the phone and tried to dial nine one one for himself? No, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I only remember yeah. Keith like flashes of that night, like still shots stuck in my head. But that night in London, when you because you'd film me, I swear somebody fucking dosed me because I remember <laughs> the chick hey, that I was hitting on, on the whole time. Christ sake! <laughs> Hey, you ever thought about taking drugs? All right, so I don't know what Zach's doing here. Uh, yeah, I was in a whole nother world uh, when I got dosed at the Fanshawe, Fanshawe College there. The chick that I was trying, like, slapping her butt and whatever I hooked up with once before. Come on, this one guy in here. There we go. So yeah, I swear I was dosed at that Fanshawe pub because the the chick that I was trying to get with her, she lived with all those bouncers. And I remember at one point looking up and looking around, and every one of these guys were staring at me. And then I remember we got out of there, got to that kid's tuna's house, and then I was throwing up for the whole rest of the night after. And you were video. You're a disaster me. for before the throwing up. You were fucked. I remember you basically had to carry you around with me by the bar. And fuck, you were fucked. I was lucky I got out of there because I don't know what the fuck was going on. But I remember watching the video and seeing my eyes too, just in a whole, I was in a whole nother world. Like that wasn't. Really what was I? Was I the one taking the video? Yeah, you were, you, you videotaped me there in the basement. Yeah. And, I was and then you, I think you, the, you stayed was up I with laughing Tuna doing, too? Probably. <laughs> 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 yeah, it'd be sick if you could find that video. I think literally like you're just, like there's shots of us just partying and like you're on the floor, like out and like just like. Like a like a fucking mannequin, and we're just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kid tuna, 
ended up ripping me off for like 5500 bucks he left left london that and was a bad but you can tell when you're with around bad people and i could tell that was a bad like the, the, those guys out there <laughs> man yeah, those yeah guys, like, get, i'm glad i have a story of one time with a guy like that because yeah you can feel when people are like i don't like them kind of people yeah the vibe the vibe for sure for sure like i would like for now it's adult like i don't i would want to be around them kind of people no uh, you still talk to Tyler? I was uh, get you to tell the story when he sliced his hand open. Oh fuck no, buddy! But you know what? This I got. I don't tell that story, but let's see. I got this one story. <laughs> um, so we like. Oh fuck! This is ages ago. But her, Nicole's brother used to have this one place that was like just down the road from me. Tyler lived across the street from there, and then Nicole had this cousin that was the fucking, fucking wild. And his dad had just died. Anyways, him and Tyler got into it about like a fucking tiny little fucking five dollar pipe that uh, he accused Tyler of stealing from him. Yeah. Next day, I'm sleeping at Tyler's space. Tyler's got like brand new tires. All four tires are slashed. Oh like, no! Fuck! I mean, right away we knew it was this guy over, over a, a, a weed pipe? pipe. Huh? Over like, a, like weed a little, pipe? like a little tiny five dollar like fucking sh- the shittiest resiny fucking. <laughs> Yeah, man. Jeez. So, anyways, this, they went back and forth the longest time, like confronting each other. And this guy would always come up with a knife and shit, and they would never fight. So, finally, like it even went to the point where, like, and this is Nicole's aunt, too, and her cousin. The one time I went over there and I told his aunt, I was like, his mom was like, listen, you gotta let these two get it over and done with. I was like, someone's gonna get killed here. They're both knives, shitting each other. I was like, let these two just fight here. And so she's like, fine, okay. So she calls her son out. She's in Regent Park, right? So mm-hmm. she goes to and tells him, like, this guy come deal with this. Place. So they go at it. And as soon as, like, Tyler throws the first punch, she came with, like, a fucking chair and smashed it over. The mom did? Yes. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? And, like, fucking Tom, I had to come in, and it's all hell broke loose. So then this is, like, their, like, fifth encounter. And everyone in the family, the Coles family, talking about fucking while. They're all, like, saying, yeah, you can tell your friend to, like, you know, leave fucking him alone. And I'm like, man, he, this, because it's your cousin, right? It's family. Of course. I'm like, listen, he's a psycho. He's fucked. Mm-hmm. He's pulling a knife out shit on him. He slashes his tires up and shit. I was like, he don't just deal with his shit, but make it like, yo, man, up square off. He keeps pulling knives and shit. And his mom even fucking smashed a chair over the guy. Anyways, they're at this party. And Tyler fucking like just had a lighter in his hand. Came up from the side and gave him the 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 fucking mildest sucker shot you've ever seen. Yeah, and fucked him up, broke his jaw in like two places, had him eating through a straw for like six months. And after that, man, that set this guy's life on a course of like he's been in Cam H like ever since. Literally, been in what? Cam H. Like this guy, I don't know if you ever saw like on the TV, there was this guy that was in the hospital and he went up bet- behind two Toronto police officers inside the hospital and tried to take one of their guns. Uh, I don't know if I've seen that now. Okay, well, that, this, this, this kid. He's also the oh, guy really? that he, yes, it's also the guy that used to go down on like I think the dance floor and any Pakistani that was there after two o'clock got like fucking beat <laughs> up. And, and, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, man, this. So I told Tyler, like, with every time I was like, man, you better, I was like, if he ever gets out, man, you're fucked. Like, yeah. if this guy gets out, Tyler's fucked. I was you like, you don't so? have to worry about it. He's going to hold you know, grudge for sure. Oh, man, that's literally what he blames his life on. His father dying and Tyler breaking his jaw. Jeez, eh? Oh, yeah. The reason I tell that story is because Nicole's parents had this little get-together, and I saw his mom, and she was there. I was like, hey, how's Trevor doing? What's going on? She's like, oh, he's, he's still in Cam H. I was like, holy <laughs> fuck. I was like, it's been like 15 fucking years. Like, still? She's like, yeah, he's got out a couple times. But, you know, they just, the system just won't leave him alone. Yeah. I was like, well, I heard. And I was like, you know, I heard he was beating the Pakistani guys on that board. She's like, yeah, but they need to be straight. They need to be straightened out. <laughs> so the whole family's nuts, eh? Oh, fuck, buddy. Jeez. Okay, so uh, let's see here. I had a couple other stories. Remember the one time sleeping over at your place? And uh, we were always pranksters. Like, this is, uh, we were growing up skateboarding and started drinking and shit when uh, CKY came out, like, just before Jackass coming out. And uh, this, I guess this isn't Jackass related at all, but I remember having a shower at your place. 
And then I hear the door opening and then close. And then you're like, look, you're like, look at the ground or something. And I, you yelled from outside and I open the shower curtain and there's a giant blue Play-Doh dick <laughs> made out of Play-Doh. And then you like grab it, it like from outside, you like grab it. And then you like squeeze it and, I squeeze <laughs> it and a bunch of fucking milk comes out of it. They had like stuck a turkey baster and filled this Play-Doh dick up with, uh, with, <laughs> with milk. So you honestly, you know what that was? Literally, that was like the early version of like, I don't know if you ever heard about it, but they call it like the dragon or something like that. But it's this yeah. huge fucker. It looks like basically like a giant squid tentacle that these fucking girls fuck. And you yeah, can fill it. alien dildos. Yeah. And you can fill it with shit, like cream and shit. And yeah, it, you know, and it's, but that was, if I had a pat oh, on that, buddy, if I had a pat on that, I was on to something, man. Nobody was <laughs> filling these things with anything in them days. Yeah, yeah. You had the color down too. Yeah. The blue was would have been popping. <laughs> Especially with that song on the this, I'm blue now. I'm yeah, that would have went together good. good. <laughs> so I went to uh I went to Aurora a couple of weeks ago and I took a tour through like uh I went back by ninety one Mosley by Town Park where I live there and I went through the co op videotaping. And Jeez. uh I'm gonna play this video and make sure your mic's on and we'll talk a little through the video. Yeah, I'll push my mic when you do it. So this is so like the, the co-op office here. And you remember right here is when the cop saw you waving your bag of weed around that I had just sold you. And then you got fucking yeah. nabbed. I took yeah. off running and then they grabbed you. Well, no, you were you were gone long. I, but there was a couple times, man. I'm like, I caught a couple times out there, man. I remember the, this time in particular. I remember I gave you the weed and then you held it up like this. And then I Yeah, you had a bad feeling. Down. And you're like, man, there's cops around here. They'll see you. And so and you took it, off. Everything was good. Everything. So no. when you said that to me, so listen, this is what happened. So I, you took off. You're like, you're paid. I'm gone. I thought, because you know, this one, if you had been just always way overweight, I would have never had to hold bags. <laughs> like if you were just generous as fuck and just gave me a good fuck, I would have just be in the pocket and I'd be gone. You would need a second look. Yeah, exactly. But you were looking to make money off of good friends in them days and it cost me. I remember you, I think you sold weed before I did. I remember you spotted me a half ounce one day and we eyed it out into like 20.7s or something like you know that. Who got me, you know who the plug was for me at first? It was uh, Gat probably, right? Yes, yes, right? And that was before anybody, like, it was just like when we were young, young. Nobody was in yeah. that shit. That EK, and man, the shit I used to get off this day, man. I remember the shit is that, like, the shit, the skunk and the, Man, this yeah, weed was too that. fresh, though. Like some of his weed was too stinky. It wasn't. I, pure. Man, it was, but I'm telling you, you had the skunk one time, and this shit was so powerful that I got called into the office one day. But I got so scared, I had like this shit stunk up the whole fucking school one day. I'm not joking around. I had a there's a quarter pound that I got off him that was too that was too fresh. It wasn't done drying and shit, so it reeked. And I left it in the garbage can on my front porch. And uh, this is when I was dating Colleen and like she would sleep at my house and I wake up the next morning and my dad's like, garbage time, get your oh, garbages. No. And I'm like, fuck. I run outside. I look in the garbage. The garbage has already been done. So then I go in the garage and I'm ripping open all these big garbage bags. And my dad's like, what are you doing? And uh, I was like, to be honest, I kept some weed outside. I didn't want mom to smell it. And then he goes behind his tool shed or whatever and fucking pulls the bag out. And I had remembered the night before the bag had a big giant half ounce bud in it. Oh, and when gone. I got the bag back, it was missing. <laughs> and then uh, even months later, I was, I can't remember what I was looking for, but I went into his tackle box and he had like 30 or 40 little pinner joints rolled. So anytime that I ran out, I just pinched the joints back. From. I don't know if you were with me back in the days, but like before guys were even getting dope, I used to get steal it from my dad. I used to get some fucking dope. Were you in that? Did I used to steal it from my dad? I used to get it from no, like I think me. You were smoking. You were smoking before I was, for sure. And that's probably when that was. But then I kind of gave it up, too, though. Like, I didn't, because we were skateboarding, remember? I never smoked really. Yeah. When I was, I think I didn't start smoking until Blue Towel Lounge closed. And then there was yeah, nothing and then else you, to do. And then, actually, when I really started smoking, then you came up, right? When we used to remember, because you used to, I used to be, we used to come to Keswick, right? Because you owed fucking everybody money. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't go out so our, the keswick with your sanctuary remember for probably fucking for a good co couple probably a so summer many, all like dime debts too like for for grams of weed i, I remember, remember one you... time one time my parents bailed me out and i think i owed like four or five hundred dollars from like quarters of weed here and there 
And my parents thought it was Coke that I owed a bunch of money for Coke. Oh and, my uh, God. Yeah. But, then, but yeah. then it was just weed. And then once those lists, like, cause I, cause they would find lists of who I owe money, but then those yeah, lists yeah. changed to everybody owing me money. And then so yeah, I would kind yeah. of leave, I would leave them out. Like, like I was proud kind of thing of it. And uh, yeah, I just retarded. Yeah. We used to have some good times. You guys like, remember we used to do like a fucking quarter there. We'd burn a yeah. Go down by the Video lake. Games, go down by the lake. English. We go there. Yeah, we go there. Exactly. My mom would set us up with the forties. We go down by the lake. <laughs> but literally, was there any trouble? Would we get in any trouble though? No, not really. No. Throwing water know, balloons and shit. That was it. Well, that was really that sober. But at nighttime, yeah. we'd be raising <laughs> swifts. We blaze this. We come in like two, three in the morning. And we come in quiet. Remember? We'd always have to come and slide in like real quiet. Yeah. Around. No, your mom was always cool about all that. I remember when we you snuck out of my place and my sister fucking ratted us out. She oh, saw us going down the pathway. That was the days. That was the days when we were real and girls too. The ho- oh, I wanted to bring this up. Do you remember oh, in the co-op no. when the whole train? Oh fuck! Did, we fucking went through that. When, thing. when we referred to all the that group of girls as the whole train, and they were cool with it, they didn't care. And I, I, like I had at one point, I think I had each one of their stink on three different fingers. <laughs> When I was sick like that, I would keep it that way. I'd use one for one, one for the other. <laughs> a little bit of, I'm not going to mention names, but there's a little bit of back and forth between the A and the C. That was good. <laughs> do you remember I'm that the... one night? Do you remember that one night we were playing this game? And I had to kiss that one grease one, and she had that thing on the lip. <laughs> remember that? Do you remember that? I remember my first. I remember my first. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. My first French kiss was. I thought, um, I thought the wife. Was I thought Amy. the wife was coming in. I thought the wife was coming in. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember my first French kiss was with uh, that chick Amy. I was like in love with her for like a year after that. You were you were hung up on that while I was going back and forth between them two fucking greasers. <laughs> but I remember there was one thing. There was a. Where there was. A, it was oh, there was just wildness, man. It was just, I'm so thank God herpes wasn't going around and thing and then <laughs> so if we were real remember... if we were real raw dogs, we would have had them all knocked out. So we did pretty I was, good. Uh, we did pretty too, good. Like, they were um, all knocked out. I was too out. shy. Like I didn't realize how easy getting pussy was back then. And uh, it was on a plate at them days, man. Them 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 things was re- like we could have had them we we could have been in there like Royal Rumble. <laughs> and, it was was so a, M- and it was a dark MSN. dingy basement it's just dark dingy dirty basements just blazing <laughs> and just fucking just but I used to have finger cramps from them them fucking nights my I remember, wrist, <laughs> before, man, I remember man I seriously man I remember some of them shit <laughs> my fucking and I had my own chick on the side going over to that fucking girl them girls house and shit when you were there eh? like I had my own thing going with <laughs> for a while when I was seeing some of them things, man. <laughs> that one I went in deep with. The one with, that starts with the C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I almost yeah, hooked, yeah, I almost yeah, hooked yeah, up with her years later, but then I decided to go to do coke and jerk <laughs> off instead. <laughs> Good call. Good call, <laughs> yeah. man. She so broke my heart. Trick. She broke my heart. Chicken. She broke my heart, man. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> kettle of words. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's a... Uh, one chick that um, she was like a custy grabbing pills and stuff, and everybody was fucking her. <laughs> and uh, I like developed a crush on her. Right? I was like, I want to hook up with this chick. That's like a wanna... custy crush. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I don't want to give her pills to do it. Like, I don't want to just trade pills for a blowjob. Oh no! Um, so wow. I get a call, f- or I get a text or call from uh, like my ex at the time. And she's like, "Oh, you're hanging it with what's her name? She has STDs and this and that." Oh. And I, I thought she was just jealous, right? But then maybe a month or something goes by and I'm with, uh, we'll leave names out of it. I'm in the washroom with one of these guys and he's like, dude, I fucked one of your custies and now I have something growing on my dick. Oh, and, uh, and then I'm like, no way. And then I found out two guys that we know got it from her and they got to get shit lasered off their dick now from it. And you were melting that? No, I was lucky I didn't. I was, I was lucky. Uh, like I thought my... you were going to tell me like you didn't even like the filleting the fish and like by some miracle. You had filleted no, no. past it or something. But... I was, I didn't get any of it. I was lucky. I was lucky I had no game. And that was it. God. 
That's and there was the uh, there's a story you always bring about about that uh, the two dirtiest chicks in the whole town. I don't know. I think it was a co-op street dance, and that's why those chicks were around. And we were at the bottom of Egan Crescent playing Truth or Dare, and it was the weirdest game of Truth or Dare. You dared them to flop their tits over the hot the guardrail. I, I brought I brought it to a different. Le- I was known to bring things to a different level. Like I, I'm not gonna lie, man. Just, I'm not gonna lie. Like I probably, I'm gonna like a, honest. There's probably about six different guys that have had their first different look at tits and and, and beef because I've had <laughs> walked up games where they just pulled out and we all just look and stare. Nobody does nothing. We all just look and stare and go, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know. <laughs> there's uh, yeah man yeah. there was another we, 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 bad, like there's ahead, other ones too like there's it's other ones yeah. we're gonna get an excuse of drinking your mom's fucking roof yeah, you just fucked it up. Why am I getting? Why am I getting the vibes of binging your mom's roof? I the podcast. Respect my respect my my gang. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, man. All right, so we're gonna show, uh, here's another co-op video that I was running through the co-op there. You're using my name to not stand for something. Holy whoa, man! That's Hey, that's looking fresh now, eh? They actually have a park. There's actually a big park in the park now. There was a time when if you went down that alleyway, man, you were going to get pelted with stuff. Like you yeah. did not want to walk down that. You did not want to walk down that spot. <laughs> Craft like, dinner, wet toilet paper. You did bench. Like I don't know. I think you're, there was no ends, but Ziploc the bags best, of shit out the window. The best bro was fucking Katai, man. That was the best. Getting it on tape to his reaction, and then played it in class and school for everybody. <laughs> Man, you fucked me with that. I had the, everything only knew. Fuck all. And then when you played that shit, everybody like they got back. <laughs> right? And he confronted Kadai you. A, and Katai is a bad motherfucker. And like you know, like he like and he had that. He was I a think cycle. He played one. No, but I like he was a cycle in them days, man. He was still he was fucking and he became a cycle too. I saw like I stabbed people up in fucking pool bar <laughs> one night. The one night he was like he was cool with me. He bought me a beer and shit. And we were student of shit. About to play a game of pool. Next thing you know, he's fucking joking, guys. And like, like, and Nicole's like, "Who are these people that they fucking?" <laughs> I was like, "Man, yeah. I just said, I know that like Adam read that." She's like, "Oh, yeah." Oh. The uh, the no, crazy man, yeah. You look like Charlie really... Manson for a second. There. <laughs> yeah, it was a perfect angle. I have to get a screenshot of it. Oh man. Um, but yeah, but the no, story no, of no, the, the, when he like, I'll never forget, man. That was. That's some of the hardest I've ever laughed was when he looked up yeah. to try and catch who that was, and he went in that speed wobble on the bike. You remember, <laughs> remember that? he had wiped out, too. That was so close to happening, but he got the feet down, and he did all that skiing and shit around, and he caught himself a man, that just that little wobble. Yeah. And yeah, man, that he, he was fucking cheesed about that for the longest time. He kept that in the bank, and then finally, you brought it out in the project, <laughs> and yeah, then they came out. Yeah, man, I remember I had a confrontation with him one day, and I was like, and "Listen, man," I and oh, I just told him, "I was like, listen, man, I didn't know it was you, man. Like, if you know." Yeah. <laughs> like, and I was like, man, and I was like, and I was like, first of all, I was like, man, I didn't even be coming up on a fucking. I did this, and he, I didn't mean to offend him, but I was like, I didn't think it'd be you coming up on a fucking BMX bike. I didn't know you were rolling like that. <laughs> We'll call it Mike McCarty. Get a ride in the Civic or something, bro. I know you're <laughs> McCarty. You know what I mean? Like, get, I thought you were rolling with on wheels. We were past BMX bikes in them days. You want to hear a funny story about that that gang, that neighborhood gang? So I remember, I used to wanted to, I used to wanted to be a part of that, like that the menace neighborhood blood gang so bad. The menace, menace, whatever you want to call them, the bloods, all those guys. <laughs> The fuck so are you talking about? Of that. The BBC? Are you talking about the BBC or that was the offset of the girls? Those are the those are the bitches. Yeah, no, the girls that got, that was the the girls got sexed in. That was, they had to get sexed the into the game, right? That was the offset of that fucking. Like, <laughs> they all they all got arrested too. That that, that girls was game. Come with that. That was that come with that thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> the you remember when they were all drawing? That? Do you remember they were all drawing their eyebrows on in school too? Oh man, like it looked like fucking Egyptian <laughs> queens. So the uh, so all those guys, they had the like a triangle burned into their arm. Oh yeah, you and come I, with the snake. 
so I see, um, so my mother-in-law, I, I just looked at her shoulder one day and she's got the three big triangles. And then I said to my oh, wife, she- I'm like, I'm like, what's, what's up with that? I'm like, was, did she grow up in a rough neighborhood in Poland or something back then? And uh, she's like, yeah, like they grew up poor and whatever. And uh, I'm like, in my neighborhood, they had like a bunch of guys that was like a gang thing. And she's like, no, that's, that's inoculation when you come in as a, when you come in as an immigrant into Canada. So the two guys that's the one or two guys that started that whole thing were immigrants and already had that mark on them. And then tricked everybody else into burning themselves to get that. Who mark was on that? Their arm. Who were the guys that started that shit? Was it like fucking what's his name? Um, that big, what the fuck was that big, big huge fucking Jamaican guy's name? That uh, they all, what was his name? Kern and them used to fucking always. Big Jamaican guy. I don't know. There wasn't too many of them. G? Was his name G or something like that? I, there was a guy named G. Yeah. I think that's who. Like one of them and then. Yeah, I don't know. I found it funny that they just their their immigration marks and then they tricked everybody else into burning themselves. <laughs> That's like somebody coming out the Holocaust and then getting a bunch of people to be like, "Yo, you gotta get like a serial number, fucking time." Yeah. <laughs> the new gang, the new Jew gang. Yeah. yeah. Jew uh, so like, so the guy that's uh, so I remember going to jail my first time and being on the paddy wagon attached to this old guy and asking him the rules. And he's telling me the rules, like don't, if the phone's upside down, don't touch it. Don't flush after lights out. And then he's like, you got to watch out for uh, I won't say names either, but he's like, you got to watch out for this guy, him and him and his buddy are breaking broomsticks over people's yeah, heads and spade? shit. Yeah. Spade? And I'm like, I'm like, is it this guy? And he's like, yeah, that's the guy. And it was like instant relief. I'm like, thank God. I'm like, I go in here. I'm like, at least the guy that I'm being warned about, at least I know and can say hi to and like yeah, you know, have a conversation yeah. with. And, uh, but then I never even saw him when I was there. I got bailed out the next day or two days later anyways. You probably could have thrown that name around and been all right, though. <laughs> he Probably. He's, uh, yeah, but, but so you... I heard that he's he's out walking around now. Like, that. he didn't go away for long for that thing that happened. No, I know. Like, yeah, I know. I think he got out after, like, six, seven years or something like that. But I know he's, um, yeah, I've, I've seen, like, yeah, I've heard some shit. I've even seen some posts on the internet and shit. I think he's in all kinds of fucking Muslim religion. Oh, stuff. yeah? Yeah, I would be surprised. He's gonna conform to something. But I know too. He used to like before all that too. He was doing dirty work for like biker gangs and shit. Won't mention which one, but Who I know the Kazakh. I know the Kazakh area. He was doing like striker work and shit for them guys. I remember like uh, at Aurora Heights in like grade five or six. He ended up in that school, but in like the special ed kind of portable in the portables and i remember like you get picked on all the time and bullied and shit and i guess that's what happens when you bully somebody too much they they end up killing people and shit like that so again his brother too had like a bad disability steven i never uh yeah i didn't know anything any of his family or anything yeah i used to i went to school with his brother for a bit didn't they catch him in the dominican or something didn't he he had fled the uh Deported him back. Yeah, I think, them, yeah I think them guys. I think them guys down there were about to fucking kill him too. I think he did some fucked up shit down there too. Probably. That guy turned from dirty, dirty shit to the other one. Yeah, I bet you he's got more than just one fucking body. Probably. I remember when he so when he first did like his first five or six years, he started coming back around the co-op and he would show up at Brennan's and nobody wanted to hang out with him, but you couldn't tell him to fuck off either because then he's gonna stab you if you see him on the street. Yeah. So he'd hang around and he used to tell him stories about like keeping two shanks in his asshole all the time and uh, getting kicked out of one penitentiary to another because he was either going to well, kill somebody down, or get killed. Getting, and Getting down stuff ranges. Yeah, so he uh, so he only lasted like six months and then he was gone again. But I could have swore that like a year ago I saw him up here and then I messaged somebody and I'm like, is he still in jail for that thing that happened? And he's like, no, he's been out for years. Well, and uh, no But I just drove by. I wasn't going to stop to say to say nothing yeah. Yeah, man, you want to get associated with that, man. Yeah. Not unless you're in that life. There's no <clears> point. <throat> in. Unless you're a street guy and you need to make that fucking connection again, there's no point in fucking. Yeah. I used to hate it when he would get my number. Anytime he ended up with my number, I'm like, fuck, you know, because he's just going to get Don't call work me. spots out of me all the time. And fucking oh, he's going to fuck you, buddy. He's going to fucking <laughs> rob you, man. Yeah. That's the guy that rob you and say sorry at the same time. Yeah. The, uh, do you remember? Um, do you remember when I was living at ninety one Mosley there? You lived in Mosley for a bit, just around from my daddy. He was yeah, right by the town park, and I, I'd meet you at like yeah, uh, the home plate of the baseball diamond or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. 
So I went back there taking some videos too. Oh, that's the co-op one. Jesus. Yeah, so this was the old house. So the two oh, people yeah. that I lived with here, like two big time crackheads, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and they would mix food coloring into their crack when they were cooking it up. And the guy threw himself in front of a car for a lawsuit and won the lawsuit. Yeah, fucking wild times there. That's when I turned into a big time junkie. I used to have my bedroom window was up there and I had the video camera streamed onto my TV out the window, making sure fucking nobody's approaching the house. Why you're that fucked up? Oh yes, yeah, sketching out every night. You remember the time I told you I was like, meet me at home plate at fucking whatever time, and then you showed up there and a cop was right there, right in that spot waiting. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a yeah, sketchy was like, spot there. There were so many hell houses man, there. You, know, you gotta take a different spot, man. There's a fucking guy. <laughs> I thought you were setting me up. <laughs> it happened before. Yeah, exactly, eh? <laughs> like a second fucking banger off. I think, but I think, man, you know, literally those those undercover guys, like, they all they wanted was you, too. Did they, like, did, they, you, did they actually stick you with the possession charge, too? Yeah, I had to do community service at that. You know, I ended up having to go to Goodwill, and it was with Marky and all the fucking guys there. Oh, yeah, everybody was at Goodwill for a while. Yeah, and they had, like, a little take going on. Then I was on the line, like, number six or whatever. Like, a bunch of guys came and out to me. Yeah, so my, I don't know who was... Marky was, like, number two or three, and then I forget who was up there. But it was all fucking badass, too, to the fucking pleaded out for fucking community service rather than jail time. Yeah, when I got kicked out of high school for selling weed, that's I had a hundred hours of community service to do too. So yeah, when they got pinched that one time, yeah, they you know what happened to that time. So yeah, when you took off, like man, the cops are coming. I got the feeling too. So I I hid the bag by a fire hydrant, mm-hmm. and I waited there for, and then I called my dad to come pick me up, and I was good yeah. right forever. And he's like, hey, and like like he told me I'll be there in like twenty minutes, so like fifteen minutes and by, I was like, you know, okay, I'm good. Like, it's been, like, 40 minutes now, probably, since, like, all this shit had gone down. They thought the cop was there. So, I'm like, okay, I'm good. So, I go by the fire engine, grab the bag, put it in my pocket, and then that, boom, all of a sudden, this, like, Honda Accord, like, all to the windows, just flies out from that. You know that apartment building across from the co-op? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's, like, uh, like across the street. That uh, What is that? I forget that street, but at the back entrance of the co-op there, where the yeah, office was. Yeah, kids selling weed for me in that building there, yeah. So right there, they came on that parking lot. Bam! Just, just waiting for you to go back to the hydrant, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just Amory, like, and then they just came, and I took off too. They yeah, you didn't make came, it far, eh? They came and like literally drove into me, like as I was running to the pathways and went across one of the, the next street over. There was another bus there that uh, I was with Sullivan and Jordan Alexander, and they were dropping me off in the co-op, and I had I had a bunch of blow and shit. And we pass a cop car as we're coming in. So as soon as we got out of the, out of the as soon as we got around the corner, I jumped out of the car and ran to my house. Yeah. And they ended up getting stopped on their way out of the co-op, but uh, they didn't have anything. But then there's another big bus there where it was me, Hayes, and Carl at right there. At the, it's, it always happens at the co-op office. Like they were watching yeah. that entrance all the time, yeah, right where yeah. I line up all the customers in the visitor parking and fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they could have just put a narc in one of those houses just to watch everything, put a camera up or something. Yeah, you were moving big weight. They were looking for they were looking for who you were going to, not who you're selling to. Yeah, I think it's I was gonna say I think it was private property too, so they had to somebody had to call them to come in there, but I guess if they're watching drug deals happen, they can come in and do what they want. Yeah, they can come. It's in your house where it becomes a fucking warrant needed. The time that it was uh me and Hayes had talked about it on here, but the time that they had busted us there, they were they were watching the kid Spencer, like the customer, like my customer, they thought he was the dealer. So when they busted us, they thought we had went um, and bought yeah, a gram eh? of weed or whatever. So they actually, so Hayes had a gram of weed and they stuck the charge, the possession charge on him for a gram of weed. Thought it was a big bust and that's all they got out of it. The Hayes. Hayes yeah. got stuck with a gram, yeah? Yeah, the gram of weed, yeah. What, Carl had a you... half quarter weed in his nuts and fucking never, yeah, found, never it? found that. No, they fucked up so bad that they let Carl go park his car in my driveway to leave his car there for the night. So he had a bunch of, he had a big garbage bag full of clothes in the back. So they thought it was like, they thought it was something big and uh, it was all unmarked cars. There was probably five cars at least. They yanked us all out of the car, like announcing charges already before they even searched (laughs) us for anything. And they realized that they fucked up so bad 
that they let Carl take his car away. We're smoking cigarettes, waiting for. They let um, you guys smoke cigarettes too. Yeah, and then uh, Hayes chews up his coke that he had and swallows it. Oh and, yeah. Uh, they just they fucked up so bad. No, nobody was saying a word. They didn't want to have any extra paperwork. They waited for the real cops to show up. They took us to the station. Eventually, let us all out. I, I left like cab money for the guys to get home because it was fucking super late by then. But yeah, oh, they stuck the them. cab money, eh? Yeah, they didn't want to let me leave money behind either. But uh, I'm like, you just—it's three in the morning. How are any of these guys getting home? That's all I had was a bunch of money on me. I did. I was lucky. I didn't have any drugs on me. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, the days were wild, but yeah, good times. All right, do you want to wrap it up? We'll do another uh, episode sometime yeah, soon. Do another one for sure, man. All right, all right. Thanks for making the time. It's good to have you on. Good time, we'll bud. talk again soon. Yeah. Maybe we'll get together in person next time and do an episode and uh, see how that goes. 100%. You got to see this thing in live action. Buddy. Look at this. <laughs> see it blow in the wind, yeah. Is that, uh, is that like a white man's beard or is it the, the Afro beard? No, this is religious. This is Islamic. This is Taliban, man. This is like, this is Taliban. I told you about the guy that I worked with, right? The full, the yeah, full blooded. Uh, yeah, he was the Qaeda, man. He was the Canadian Qaeda. Yeah, I don't know if they had a nickname for him, but uh, I actually read more into it, and they didn't have a lot of physical evidence on him. They, uh, it was just, it was, seemed like it was a lot of this dirty cops um, hearsay type shit, and they ended up just sending him back to Pakistan instead of uh, holding charges on have- him or anything. What was what was your view? If you if they said, hey, listen, you work with them, send them back or keep them here, what would you have said? Oh, shit, that would be a tough one. Um, there was a lot of weird quotes and shit from the guy. So I'd probably say okay, send them so back. Okay, so I don't even want to just send them back or keep them here. I don't want to hear none of the other shit. Send them back or uh, keep them here. Send them back. He's been... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was charged for beating his wife and shit like that, so fuck him. And you know what? You might have to run for politics. Yeah, I shall be. I'll do better than the fucking guys doing it now. Are you voting for Jagmeet Singh, the TikTok politician? I don't know. Like, I'm not lie. Like, I love fucking meat. And if you got that in your name, you might got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't fucking whack. Honestly, like, I would go there and fucking burn the pieces of paper. None of them fuckers are doing nothing for me. And actually, honestly, because I work in a union, so I probably do conservative. Whoever's going to be pro union and good on construction but they, if yeah. i was if, if i was wealthy and rich and didn't have to depend on anything then i would even vote for any of these fuckers are all fucked i feel like nothing changes anyways whoever wins there's no drastic change well, anyways whoever who can lie the best and just kind of do a little bit of what they said they were gonna do so it wasn't a complete lie yeah 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 it's just it's a fucking joke yeah it's a money grab <laughs> For sure. All right, buddy. Till next time. Okay, Zach. Good to see you, man. Tell your mom I said hi. Good to see her. Yeah, we will do, buddy. You too, man. Take care, Same with the family. Take care, buddy. Yeah, man. All the best, bud. See ya. Cheers.